Hello, we welcome you to another episode of the Cosmic Matrix podcast. Once again, with your host, Bernhard Gunther, and my wife, Laura Matsu. And the title of this episode is How to Actualize Your Creative Potential. Now, this is a big one, very, very important for the times we're in right now. We really need to tap into our creative potential and really, as part of creating the new world, our new lives. And many of us, you know, have gone through some hardships and have to let go of the past of the old world. So it's about really activating our creative potential in this day and age. It's key. So one, some of the topics we're getting into is really about the importance to activate our creative potential and why it is needed now more than ever. We look also into evil, the role of evil and how re evil is really not capable of creating anything new and actually lacks creativity. We'll be diving deeper into the interrelationship between inspiration and creativity and also shadow work, how shadow work is necessary to unleash our creative potential. We look also at the bigger picture and how creativity ties into the age of Aquarius and Pluto in Aquarius, as well as the link between creativity, opulence and abundance. And as we dive deeper, we also look into the interrelationship between sexual energy and creative energy and how the matrix forces have cut us off from our creative energy via the distortion of sexual energy or feeding off of the sexual luge of humanity. And we also will be giving practical tips of what you can do right now to activate your creative flow. And before we dive into this episode, just a little announcement. Some of you, or I hope many of you, have received my newsletters where you can subscribe to at veilofreality.com. And we announced a free masterclass on embodied shadow work, which will be happening this Monday, the 11th. However, the class is already full. It filled up literally in record time within one hour after I sent out the newsletter for people to sign up and register. That was already last week. So if you want to also stay updated, go sign up to my net newsletter on my website, veilofreality.com. Having said that, we still have some spots left in our intensive 12-week in-depth group coaching program, Time of Transition Embodied Soul Awakening, which will be starting July 25th for three months until October 15th. And that's a very, very deep dive combining the necessary inner and outer work in light of the fourfold approach of holistic self-work, really combining in-depth psychological, somatic, and spiritual work to also help you activate your creative potential. And really, we dive much, much deeper in very practical ways in many of the topics we have talked about here in our podcast. So you can find more about it and apply at thattimeoftransition.com. Again, that's thattimeoftransition.com. Now, without any further ado, let's dive deeper into how to actualize your creative potential. Okay, so why is this so important right now? Well, what we're dealing with right now is Pluto is in the late degrees of Capricorn. Everything's super dark, super corrupt. No one trusts the institutions anymore. You see all the Saturn structures of reality, the medical system, the, me the mainstream medical system, the education system, even the government, you know, everyone's losing faith in all those structures because of the amount of corruption that we're seeing. So we're going to be in for a big generational shift the even now actually because we're in the late degrees of capricorn but pluto is going to enter aquarius a new sign which will be a 20-year cycle and this is going to start from march to june 2023 and then unfortunately it's going to go retrograde back into capricorn for the rest of the year but then january 21st isn't that your birthday by the way January 27th, oh, my love. Okay, <laughs> That's sorry. Okay. okay, January 21st, it's going to set up shop in Aquarius for 20 years, basically. So the reason, and you're like, what does Aquarius have to do with creativity? Well, you don't actually just consider Aquarius as part of the themes of the generation. It is also includes a polarity point of Leo. So Aquarius is about individuation, and Leo is about creative self-actualization and they go both hand in hand actually because the more individuated you are the more creative energy that you have access to so just think about it as we're going to be working with both the aquarius and leo archetypes in collective ways obviously it's going to hit everyone differently if you have certain planets and certain signs getting aspected by uh by aquarius or even in leo it will affect you differently i'm not going to go into that because it'd be impossible to but just to know 
your individuation and your creative self-actualization are going to come to the forefront at the beginning of 2023. And the reason we're talking about it right now is because basically we need to set the seeds of the next era that we're ending into. We have a tremendous opportunity right now. Um, but if we don't plant the seeds now, or even like a year ago, or just at least start now, then what's going to happen is we're not going to have any new thing to step into. And personally, like, you know, the technocracy will probably give us all the solutions of the AI, all sorts of other forms of, you know, disassociative technology, get us more and more out of body. So we really need to be the creators of this next world that we're stepping into. There's an amazing opportunity right now. When people lose trust in the current structures, it creates an opportunity for something new to emerge. And this will happen across the board in many different industries. So we really want to think about like, how can we turn up the volume on our creative energy? Because when we speak also about divine will, is your creative energy is the clearest channel of divine will as well. You have this creative spark in you, whether it's even small or it's very strong, you know, but we all have it. And the more we can access our creative energy, the more that we also become conscious transducers of divine will ourselves. Exactly. Very well said. And that also relates to the, the famous Buckminster Fuller quote, uh, which says, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So we're going through this death-rebirth process. The old structures, institutions are not working anymore. It's not about saving the animal. And I say, this, I say this again, it's not about building back better, as we know the globalists use Biden and all of that. But it's also not, I would even also challenge, it's not about MAGA, not about making America great again, going to the past and all of this. And yes, there's something to be said about upholding traditional values, but there's a lot of nostalgia wanting to go to the past of how we think things were. No, it's a complete, complete quantum leap. And we need to engage our creative potential. It's not about fighting the existing um, structure or trying to save the system or all of that. And I know many people, maybe including you, are struggling. Maybe some of you have lost a job because of, of the, the job mandates and not wanting to get it and all of that. Many other things. and uh, Or the schooling system, educational system, you know, taking your kids out of the schools and not wanting to be in the public uh, educational system and many people then try to still you know change the um, the public systems or trying to go back to to the employees and whatnot no let it go this is like laura said this is an opportunity to create something new and it's i'm not going to say it's easy but it need we need to engage our creative potential and it takes a lot of energy it takes will it takes risks it takes courage and it also takes self-responsibility because many of us we've been like especially if a general, uh, we have a general job or whatever, we're getting so used to the comfort of like the paycheck and whatnot. But there's a lot of opportunity right now, ironically, even with this whole recession, whatnot for entrepreneurship, for something new to see, for something new to create. But we need to also get over this doom and gloom, fear frequency of might, what might happen and the great reset and all of that. There's an opportunity right now and it, it requires to unleash our creative potential. Yeah. And the reason if you're in this kind of doom and gloom fear mindset, you're actually probably not accessing your creative potential because no. you'll be in a shutdown trauma survival state, basically. Um, and so, you know, it is important we actually do our own self healing before. It's not like you're just going to go from being extremely disassociated and traumatized to being creative. Although I have to say at moments, I've also kind of saved myself through creativity, even when I was very traumatized, but we want to look at like, you know, creatively creativity will naturally flow when you're in touch with your true self. It's just the yes. most natural thing in existence, you know? And I'm going to actually add on a couple of quotes from Osho that relate to what I said about creative being a channel for the divine. Cause some people will be like, what is she talking about? And he said, and he's, he had a whole book on creativity, which I read a while ago and I was reading again for this post podcast, but he says, you become more divine as you become more creative. All the religions of the world have said that God is the creator. I don't know whether he is the creator or not, but one thing I know, the more creative you become, the more godly you become. When your creative creativity comes to a climax, when your whole life becomes creative, you live in God. So he must be the creator because people who have been creative have been closest to him. Love what you do. Be meditative while you're doing it, whatever it is. 
And he really talks about how creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. That's another quote he has about it. Because awesome. it is rebellious. It yes. is. Like the moment that you create something new that you haven't seen in this world, you are rebelling against the current existing structures of reality. Um, I can give you actually a direct example on how I personally did this. So, you know, there's all, I've, so everyone can kind of see that the um, internet is shifting into reels, TikTok culture. Personally, I'm not a fan of TikTok because I personally believe that the CCP party is, I don't even believe, I've seen evidence that the CCP party uses it to spread propaganda. Besides the point, these like, you know, 60, 90 second reels are obviously where people are being drawn to. So I had to start creating them, even though I'm mainly a writer. And all of the um, marketers out there are being like, point to things dance like it's all super cheesy you know i don't want to be like, like filming, a formula right? i don't want to filming selfies to me pointing into like d into space because it just feels really stupid for me it doesn't feel right so i had to basically be like okay this is the medium i'm working with i have 60 to 90 seconds i can put audio i can put voiceover i can put music and i just invented something i was like i'm just gonna take my writing and take nature shots because i have a lot of both. We go hiking every day. Um, and I'm just going to combine them together. And that's all I did. So I just used my own thinking to create something. I'm sure other people have had similar ideas, but regardless, I wasn't copying. So the moment you're copying and you're trying to emulate, you're working in Saturn reality. You're working in like what already exists, what's already been done, what's tried and true. And I'm not saying there isn't a time and place for that, but you need your originality to come through. You need your true essence. There's something about you that makes you uniquely you, which is actually the biggest wellspring for your creativity. So the more that you're yourself, the more creative you become. Well said. What well, that whole um, topic of uh, imitation, plagiarism, copying, especially on social media, is a topic on its own. But speaking of imitation, right? Let's let's look at the bigger picture and how evil works. The dark side is actually very much like, since we just talked about the creative principle, it's, it's connected to the divine, divine will, our true self, the light, right? That's where all the creativity springs from. Evil is not capable of creating anything uh, new. And there's even a really famous quote by J.R.R. Tolkien, obviously from Lord of the Rings, saying, evil is not capable of creating anything new. It can only distort and destroy what has been invented or made by the forces of good. So... That's very important to understand. And I've mentioned this in my writings and maybe in other podcasts before. The way these matrix forces, the dark side evil works, right? They hijack us through mind control. They need also adhere to the universal law of free will. They need the consent, quote unquote, of the masses that they go along with their agenda. So that's why the propaganda, the lies, the Hegelian di dialect of problem, reaction, solution, brainwashing, all have gone over for hundreds and thousands of years, media, propaganda, to make people believe that there's a pandemic and that there, that there's even climate change and all of this to go along with an agenda that actually works against them, uh, their best interest, against the people's best interest. But the way evil works is they use our creativity, our connection to within ourselves to manifest their reality To their reality through us. They want to create their reality through us. We become in their vessels for them, so to speak. If we don't tap in our own um, uh, potential of creative uh, exploration and manifestation within ourselves and connect to our true selves and reject the authoritarian way of living and getting out of consensus state. Many people in the consensus state of the masses, their beliefs and thoughts are not their own. They literally help the matrix to con uh, create the reality Uh, that is intended to enslave humanity. Yeah, and the biggest way that we waste our creative energy is we just waste time and energy on things that we're, we become consumers instead yes. of creators. Like we all live in this hyper consumption culture. And I'm not saying that there's a time and place for that. You know, I also consume a lot of information. There's a lot of people. It's amazing. Like we have access to pretty much everyone's creative work online at the click of a button, you know, but you got to watch out as well as like you're, when you're watching uh, you know, media or even on social media and you just get drained from it, like that's usually a sign that it's taking away your creative energy, whatever it is. And it doesn't even mean that necessarily evil or bad, but that's the number one way that we get our creative energy stolen from us. And then there's also the whole sex industry and porn and, sexual you know, sexual energy and creativity are inherently 
they're the same thing, basically, you know, they're the same energetic principle within ourselves. So the more that we're also, you know, the, another big way that I know that a lot of people lose creative energy is by being addicted to porn as well. Yeah. yeah. So I want to go deep into that later on, the interrelationship between sexual energy and creative energy. We're going to do a second hour. Exactly. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, but I want to just, you know, touch upon or continue what you said about our creative potentials light in the true self like divine will, but Osho said, right? Our connection yeah. to God, our divine essence. So the question obviously is how do we access it? And that's where shadow work comes in. Shadow work is key in this process to really access our creative potential because the shadow by itself, by definition, is just that not negative traits. The shadow by definition is that which is unconscious. And yes, a lot of negative traits we feel ashamed about ourselves and then project externally, we which need to uncover not to... Uh, act them out or to be aware of them and transmute them but within the shadow even Carl Jung said the majority is is also buried our golden shadow our potential our creative potential our talents all of that as Joseph Campbell said the the um the cave ca the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek exactly and that's why this inner work uh, diving deep within our own psyche is so key to uncover your um, creative potential. And I want to share a quote here also by Carl Jung. He says, our greatest treasure is that which is hidden deep within our own subconscious. It is that dark, unused part of ourself that is in fact light that is unconscious of itself. And Joyce, Joyce Hilfer um, really clarified that quote in her own way. And I want to uh, mention her writing as well. Because with shadow work, we dive deep into the mud, so to speak, into the darkness. But the more we, we dive deeper, we really access the light. That's the whole point of shadow work, of trauma work, to integrate our lost parts, to remove all of that that's in the way of finding our true self, the true light. It's about wholeness, too. That's exactly. the key point. So we're trying to not, you know, I think especially, I've noticed this in the spiritual community, we try and put on this like spiritual self-image. Yeah. But actually, if you look at some of the artists, you know, the great poets and artists across the ages, they're not just pretending to be some sort of image. They are able to access the spectrum of human experience, and that's why where their brilliance comes from. Exactly. So here's a quote by Joyce. Hiffler. And she says, giving up robs us of drawing gold from our depths. Imagine having a well, a very deep well that is topped off with several feet of tainted water. But deeper down, the water is clear and down even further, it is a spring, a spring that bubbles cold and pure through deposits of gold. Should we give up because of what we saw in the beginning? Or do we want to tap the depths and clear away the polluted water and get down to the very best part? It is true that we only know 5% of who and what we are. Then is it possible that we should have untapped depths, which is our being is where our being is pure and free of contamination. Shall we give up such a rich experience because of what we have seen on the surface? Yeah, and what she's basically speaking to is that you have to be okay with anything that comes out of your brain, your mouth, your mind when you're being creative. If you are already criticizing it before it even comes out, then that's also part of maybe your shadow that you need to look at. So, you know, that's the joy of like being an artist is you don't even know what's going to come out of you sometimes. You just feel that spark. You know, we're going to talk about the Damien in the second hour a little bit. There's this divine almost spark of inspiration that comes and visits you. And if you have, if you're scared, as she said, to kind of go down because of the tainted water, you know, that might be on the surface, like all the thoughts that you don't want to think, all the things that you don't want to express, all the, um, you know, ideas that you don't want to acknowledge are in your head that you're not going to get to the wellspring of creativity, I think is what she's pointing out. Yeah. That's exactly one part. Other part that came to me, and she talks about the tainted water. Also, at the beginning, when you really dive deep, do shadow work or trauma work, you will come or even do meditative work somatically into your body. It's not like, again, this idea like, oh, I'm going to be love and light and bliss and here's my true self. No, no. You will count a lot of parts you have been suppressed, denied, avoided, not only this lifetime, but many lifetimes, a lot of feelings, emotions or ideas, beliefs about yourselves you do not like. You like to avoid. You yeah. tend to project externally. You have disowned within yourself. So that's why shadow work is messy. It takes courage because you rather be completely honest. Authenticity 
that also implies authenticity, right? Creativity is linked to authenticity. Oh, for sure. But true authenticity is also facing yourself, not lying to yourself and accepting yourself fully with full self-responsibility. Exactly. And if you have never run this kind of inner work, shadow work can be extremely difficult and, and um, uh, you know, disturbing at the beginning because you will c come face-to-face uh, -face with parts you have disowned. But again, only project externally you need to own them back you know to integrate the shadow to become whole and then she says you go deeper and deeper and then the light appears that's where you find your true unified self connected to the divine yeah and also the shadow work helps you integrate the personal unconscious so that includes both positive and negative qualities and the unconscious your personal unconscious is what kind of links you into the collective unconscious but it's also the wellspring of where the uh, imaginative ideas come from so people who you know these kind of like jk rowling jr tolkien you know any really amazing writer or artist or tends to have a link to this collective unconscious when they create you know so the more that we're actually walling ourselves off from our own personal unconscious the parts of ourselves we don't want to acknowledge and look at are there that are parts of ourselves even our thoughts like people literally will hide from their own thoughts because they're too disturbing for them to acknowledge yeah. you know so if you have this like if you're in a relationship and like in the back of your head you're like oh my god like this is not the right person for me i'm miserable we're not emotionally attuned but then people will literally wall that off in their psyche and you'll see it actually it creates you know emotional suppression will either create a depressive state or a high anxiety high alert hyper vigilant state so we want to you know notice like do i feel safe and connected and calm in my body because that is kind of the basis of like uh, the ground that you're going to create from if you feel hyper vigilant or you feel depressed the trauma work is really key as well. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, what should we go into What next? about, uh, I want to link the link between creativity and inspiration. Yes. It's also very important, you know, because we need, in order to create, we need to be inspired. Yes. And, you know, well, so, go ahead. I would also say that you can foster that inspiration on your own and you're, like, so there's, I know that there's some people, including myself, who'd be like, oh, I just don't want to write until I feel like it. I just want to create until right, I feel like it. Point. But the more that you're in your true self, the more that you can literally turn it on at any moment you want. And maybe your first draft won't be good, but as you practice, it will get yeah, better. That's a good point. It's not just, yeah. That's, but let's go into the, the, uh, the word itself, inspiration, right? The root word from Latin ins inspirare, which means to breathe into life to infuse, to be infused with spirit, also from Latin spiritus. So the earliest English writing, writings were using, English, in English were using inspire to give it the meaning to influence, move, or guide through divine or supernatural agency or power. Mm. So it really included in the word already that the inspiration comes from somewhere else, right? Yeah. And I've always said before, uh, many times before, again in my writings, and we've talked about that we are transducers of, of higher forces, so we are also transducers of divine will, of, of positive forces, of our higher self, other forces that create through us that we can draw upon. I'm not talking about occult hostile forces that also use us and actually use our creativity against us, as I mentioned before. That's how evil works. Uh, but a lot of it, we are transducers where we tap into something higher. Highly creative people, you know, they also know that this, what they create, is not a quote unquote their own, but they're tapping into something higher you know the divine will something beyond the ego personality and in a sense we quote unquote channel that and in order to tap into that like laura said it's not just waiting for it we need to also um foster approach that it and foster that relationship yeah. exactly sometimes you need to engage the will and sit and it requires discipline as well yeah yeah exactly and also you know it's like a muscle the better, the more you practice it, the better you get, actually. It's like any other skill, you know, you want to learn how to play piano, you got to practice. You want to learn how to write, you got to practice. You know, also, if you want to learn how to write, you need to read as well. You need to, yes. you know, that's, that's one form of consumption, which is great, is that the more that you read, the more expansive your, your vocabulary becomes, the better writer, the better speaker you become. I notice a distinct difference when I'm not right, when I'm, I'm, in, I'm always reading, but in my life, I've taken some breaks from reading and my creativity suffered, to be honest. And that was maybe necessary for the time being, but we want to surround ourselves with influences that also inspire us 
music, art, books, even being in nature, you know, this is how you kind of start to open the flow a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's really important also what we consume, because again, in this day and age with this extreme, you know, we have so much media, so much information, uh, so much, uh, you know, technolo technology that distracts us. It's also important what do we focus on? What media do we consume as well? Mm. Right? There's a lot of trash and stuff you don't really get want to get into your conscience. No. And it's easily distracted in our, into, into our consciousness. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because we can easily distract the lower vital feeds of this and that and gossip and and all those kinds of things we indulge in that takes us away from our creative potential because any art, piece of art, any creative artist knows that it requires a lot of work and dedication to create something. And the, what we are talking about creativity is not necessarily related to traditional art like painting or making music or writing. That's fine and good, but creating your life, creating a life. Yes. Right? Be, to get out of the the beliefs and that also tapping into our creative potential uh, also implies questioning where do we have our do our beliefs come from deconditioning deconditioning we have yes. a lot of like i see a lot of people self-sabotaging them you know unconsciously you know if you have not made your shadow conscious you have there can be unconscious fear of success because you don't feel not good enough and all of that and self-sabotage any any successful endeavor and whatnot so it's really important to do this inner work to embrace or to tap into this creative potential and face all these beliefs. The scarcity program is a big one nowadays, right? With people are definitely are ch uh, being challenged, are struggling in many ways. But within it, there's always a lesson how in, in the lesson or the way out is tapping into the creativity and seeing things differently. And it also implies trying things out. You know, stepping into your creative potential, like I've seen in my life with many endeavors I've got myself into, be it even with my body work, with my writings, any creations, you have to be risky, try things out, and you will fail. And Allow yourself that. to be Allow yourself shit, to fail. Basically. Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> it's not everything is good. Sometimes I write on my, and I, I judge myself. And like Laura said, it takes time. I mean, I look back by my first writings 15, 20 years ago, and it's like, oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe, you know, uh, you know, I, I would, I, you know, I can be very hard on myself as well, but it takes time to create and you test it again and again, and you do it over and over. Yeah, you got to have this kind of like experimentation, curiosity kind of thing. You got to yes. also, you, you have to leave room to fail a lot. In fact, especially in the beginning, especially if you're just starting out with a creative gift or maybe you're reigniting it after a long time, not paying attention to it, you know, um, is that it will take time for you to kind of get your legs on this again and just to practice. Most of the time, the first draft of anything I write very rarely do I publish that unless I'm like, wow, that was like, I think maybe like one time out of like 25 things I write, I'm like, okay, I did it, you know, but that's only, by the way, the only times that have happened is either when I'm in meditation retreat or I just get out of it because my con, like my mind is so clear that I don't have to edit it down. Actually, I'm able to say it in as little as words as possible, but just best know that your first painting your first photography your first piece of writing like allow it to be crappy and just forgive yourself for that because it will be but you'll get better you'll get a little bit better every single day you know and as long as and, and especially if you're doing something that's unique that's never been done before there can be a lot of anxiety and fear when you put it out there yeah. and that for, for me, I don't really think that that goes away. Like almost every single time I post something on social media, something I wrote, something I made or whatever, there's a little bit of anxiety behind it Yes, because you're stepping into the unknown. You're stepping into the uncomfort, the discomfort yes. of putting yeah. yourself out there. And yeah, people will like tell you it's crap. They'll project the on, on you. you. It doesn't happen all the time, by the way, but just be open for that to happen. People will not even take you seriously. Like you got to be open to that to happen, which actually really leads me into the, can I talk about the Pluto and Leo archetype can, a little one, bit? One second before yeah. we dive into that, you made some really important points because I still have, when I post something or put my writings or anytime, I still also have this anxiety because I put myself, it's like, especially when I speak of my own experiences, I put myself out in the corner court naked to the world. Yeah. Right. And then like you said, you have always the trolls that attack us, the haters, so to speak. But I want to, uh, touch upon that as well by the way i also get my creative insights ideas when i'm out in nature just like downloads inspiration 
Yeah. So basically, you know, I mean, you actually have a South node in Leo. I have a fifth house stellium. So I also acknowledge that creativity tends to come naturally for us. It's a default. But if you don't feel creative, you know, and if everything we're talking about, like, oh, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to give you a tip. And this is from evolutionary astrology. So Pluto or not Leo, not Pluto and Leo, but the Leo archetype rather is preceded by the cancer archetype. So the more that we actually have a solid emotional basis. We feel good about ourselves. We have solid self-esteem. The easier our creative self-actualization is. So essentially what I'm trying to say is like, as long as you're dependent on like what the outer world thinks of you and it it's getting to the point where you don't even put anything out there because you're afraid of the feedback, then you need to actually focus on developing a solid sense Mm -hmm. of self, solid Mm -hmm. self-esteem being, you know, that's kind of like what people, the rare people who have secure attachment and healthy attuned caregivers get, they just go out in the world and they do their thing. And they're like, okay, some people are going to like it. Some people aren't, but it doesn't change who I am as a person. And that's the issue is like, if you, if you start creating from a really fragile ego, then what happens is you'll either be inflated when people like it or deflated when people don't like it. And it'll give you these intense highs and lows, also narcissism, delusions of grandeur, you know? So if you're having trouble being creative, just being like, okay, but what's my relationship with my early childhood stuff? Have have I learned how to be emotionally self-sufficient? Meaning I'm not dependent on constant attention and validation for my creativity. So if you're if you haven't sorted out that early childhood stuff and the self-esteem issues that it can create, then you'll be constantly demanding reassurance, validation, mm. and no amount of external validation will work if you don't have the emotional basis within yourself. So it's kind of like he's like tortured artists, like Kurt Cobain's like the first archetype that comes to mind, but he was like, you know, so intensely creative, really created something new, you know, created this whole kind of like, new, yeah, this new kind of music. Right. But you can see his sense of self was so fragile that he collapsed under the weight of his creativity. And that's, that, that can and be the, an issue. And the attention he got. Basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a trap. If uh, people then identify with their creation and, and their sense of self-worth, is tied into the quote-unquote products or whatever they do. Yes, yeah, right? and that's a big hindrance. Yeah, so that's, you got to just let it go. You got to be like some like personally. I found the things that I like the most that I've created sometimes don't get the biggest engagement or like people, you know, very, very few people will get it, you know? So the barometer is not actually other people's approval. The barometer is like, do I feel like I expressed something that was important to me? Do I like it? You know? And if you're just beating yourself up about every single thing that you write, then it points to these kind of, you know, the needs of the cancer archetype. You need to actually have this more firm emotional basis by looking at your early childhood, by looking at yourself, self-esteem by looking at the way you relate to yourself before you creatively self-actualize yes that's where you tap into your creative potential by this inner work now it's interesting to note as well so it's also important not to look at others when you're really creative you know not to compare yourself or what others do that's what ties into the trap of imitation not of people just copycats of copycats they're not really creative they're following quote-unquote formulas as you just mentioned yes on social media and all that but i want to just talk about your creative potential is also deeply linked to your quote-unquote sole purpose, to this one thing that you can do better than anybody else. It's very unique to you. And that's what Joseph Campbell talked about, follow your bliss and the rest will come. Even when that far, follow your bliss and the money will show up, so to speak. I mean, more is needed than that. Um, But what he's hinting at following your bliss is this one thing you really into that excites you. You know, Tyson, you have talked about this before, tap into the joy of the inner child. And joy is also the, the pure essence and attribute of your soul being that doesn't depend on anybody's attention on you. So following your bliss, you can see your creative potential, even what Laura just shared, and so you do something that excites you and you don't care what other people think about it. Uh, you don't almost don't even care about the outcome. There's something by the act of doing it excites you and you're, you're extremely energetic. So also important to understand that to be creative and inspired, meaning infused of spirit, is to be full of life, energetic, animated. It really like, you know, once you're really creative and tapped into your bliss of what really excites you, you get a pr- tremendous amount of energy from the from nature, your life force gets activated because you're motivated by this creative spirit, creative impulse, yeah. so to speak. So that's also kind of a guideline. But our bliss is also, 
you know, covered up. The joy of inner child is covered up because of what Lord just mentioned, our childhood wounding, our programming, our conditioning, trauma, shadow aspects, self-diminishing thoughts, sort of thoughts we have about ourselves, uh, actually parents that maybe shunned us or have uh, put us down when we were creative. And then all of a sudden we feel we're not good enough. When we do this, we don't receive the love. So we're really afraid to shine, to show our creative potential because of what how other people may perceive us. Yeah, especially if you were like very creative uh, as a child, which is a lot of children, by the way. Most children have this inherent like curiosity creativity to them but the moment that someone tried to like told you you weren't good at doing that or someone you know even these little moments where you were like a kid and you showed your mom something you created and she didn't actually acknowledge it that can be a block you know so we have to look at all these like all the moments we were told were not creative all the moments we were told we were not talented all of this is stuff that gets suppressed into the shadow that limits our creativity i know actually i had one experience where i used to be in choir um in elementary school as a kid and i auditioned for this like next level choir and i and uh and then i freaked out i got so anxious in the audition i did i like totally bombed it and they didn't let me into this choir and then ever since then i didn't like sing anymore basically so it was like you know that's the kind of traumas that can happen to the creativity though is like one moment that's disheartening that's not sufficiently supported by the environment meaning that if i went home to my parents and told them what happened and they were like oh but you are really talented it would have been a repair but that was enough to kind of like burn out my light Mm. in that area I hear you sing sometimes. You have a beautiful voice. Yeah, I, I do it now, but I would never do it like um, professionally. Maybe that's still my but, block there. But regardless, what I'm trying to say is like, don't underestimate. It's good to take stock of any moments where someone you felt shut down your creative light. They were like, why would you do that? That's stupid. What's the point? Whatever. Told you you're not good at doing that. That's all important to look at because that actually becomes the basis of you suppressing your creativity later on. So that, I'd like to tie this into something else. Also very important to be very honest with yourself. And I can also put the mirror on myself. At times, also when you, the more you're removed from your own creativity, from your own inner spirit, the less you're inspired, the less you're connected to your bliss, the more you tend to criticize others, mm-hmm. the more you tend to talk shit about others, the more you're stuck in negativity and complain about this and that, life sucks, blame, all of that. Yeah. That's really a big sign. Right? There's a lot of people, like especially nowadays, trolls, the people that are just professional, they just talk shit, they just troll, criticize everyone, but they never put anything worthwhile out themselves. Yeah. Right? They're just the anonymous people who just want to talk shit. It's their own unacknowledged pain, their own frustration. And I can own this myself. You know, many years ago, 15 years ago, I remember or longer than that, 17 years ago, I was working as a body worker massage therapist at this retreat center. It was a great job. I love my work. But there was this other guy working there as well, also a massage therapist, but also was a yoga teacher. He was hosting yoga retreats. And he was really successful. He made good money. And, um, you know, really in his element. He hosted retreats in Peru, all of that back in the days, yoga retreats. And he would trigger me. I would just talk shit about him because I thought he's just slimy. He's just like, oh, say he's charging way too much and all these things, all my projections um, to make myself feel better. Right. But what I realized in my own inner process in applying shadow work, because Mm. I was clearly projecting on him, he was triggering me, Mm. was uh, as I dove deep within myself that I was actually projecting onto him and criticizing him, talking shit about him because I was envious about him. And I was not as quote unquote creative or successful, hasn't fully realized myself on that level. I was diminishing myself. And instead of exploring this myself, instead of getting seen as a motivation, inspiration, I turned it against him, talked. In, and started just putting him down, even gossip about him behind his back to other therapists and all said to make myself feel better. Yeah. Right. In that sense. So that's very important to to acknowledge and look into your own life where you constantly complain, criticize. This is not good enough. This is this and that. And where it's really stemming from. Yeah. And, and if you are unhappy with something in the world, it's like Jordan Peterson says, that's your problem. <laughs> like, go fix it. Yeah. Clean up, you know, before before you. Talk about others, clean up your own room, so to speak. Exactly. Uh, metaphorically speaking. But it right? bothers you for a reason. So, for example, 
I was not into this whole cheesy TikTok dancing, pointing thing. I was like, I'm not going to do that. That would be <laughs> inactual. But it actually, it irked me. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to do it like this, you know? And I was like happy with the result. But that's what I mean. Is is there something in the external world, something people are creating that bothers you? Well, that's your problem. What are you going to do about it? Are you just going to talk, leave comments online? And like, you know, just like I, some people hate follow people just so that they can hate on them. It's so toxic toxic to you, you know, creativity stems from your joy. So the moment I'm in a joyful, happy mood is a moment that the flow totally opens up for me. And I just start yes. getting tons of ideas. Like it literally comes, you have to feel safe, secure, calm, connected to yourself and joyful. And then that's the ingredient. Yeah. And that's, and I'm gonna, on that note, yes, I want to give you guys a challenge, something practical. So for anyone listening to this, Go for one week. That's already a lot. Maybe just for one day, but go for one week without complaining about anything, without criticizing anything, without any negativity. I'm not saying this as a new age bypass of just, but the the uh, purpose of this exercise is really to observe yourself, how your mind may still get irritated by tribal stuff, always wants to complain, negativity, even justify your limitations of why you can't do certain things. And observe not only in verbally, but also your thoughts who are drawn to complaining, negativity, criticizing all along, and observe yourself truly. Where is it truly coming from? Because most often, if you're not self-aware, if you're not engaged in inner work, we project it externally. We blame others, and we give the cause to others for uh, uh, our negativity and why we criticize and all of that, instead of realizing that it comes from our own unconscious shadow projection. So go for a week without complaining and see the effect it has on you or how your mind really works. It's really an exercise of self-observation. Yeah. And I'm just going to give some reflection questions as well to kind of close it off. So, you know, what is your relationship to your creative impulse? Do you ever feel a creative impulse? What is it like in your body? What does it feel like? Creative impulse is a feeling toned emotional state. So it, to me, it has a certain feeling nature. It would be different for me than different for you, but I feel this openness, this curiosity, this playfulness, this joyfulness. That's the essence of it. And do you have a conscious relationship with that spark? What happens when you have that spark? Do you not have that spark at all? Which points to maybe needing to look at the trauma piece, looking at early childhood wounds where you didn't feel safe to be yourself. So what do you do when that happens? And then also something, some practical exercise I'm going to offer as well is that I've been doing, uh, it's funny because I used to do this myself without even reading about it, but there's a really famous book called The Artist Way and she talks about morning pages and it's super famous practice. It's basically writing every morning, first thing in the morning without compromise, three pages stream of consciousness. So the pages can be, she doesn't really distinguish how many, like what kind of pages, computer pages or notebook pages. So it can be written, it could be typed, doesn't matter, but it has to be stream of consciousness. Meaning if you're thinking about your to-do list, if you're complaining, actually, this is okay to complain in this exercise. If you're just stressed out about what happened yesterday or stressed out about, you know, some chore you have to do, get it all out because this is in the way of your creativity. So three pages every morning and just wow. get out whatever is going on and you will be shocked at how much will it will open the flow. It may not happen right away, you know, but personally for me, it was pretty quickly about like five days into doing the practice. I'm already a creative person, so maybe it was a bit easier for me, but about five days into doing the practice, I was had a better vocabulary. I was able to think and speak more clearly. I was able to formulate new ideas in a different way. So I could totally notice it's working because I got all the junk out of my brain. So, you know, the more parts of your kind of subconscious or pre-conscious that you're walling off, the more you're walling off from your creativity. So you have to be willing to go there. You have to, if you're upset at someone and you don't want to acknowledge it to yourself, it's going to come out onto that page. You know, all of the stuff that you're avoiding looking at will often come out. So just let it flow and then see what happens and then see what arises out of that. And she really talks about how, you know, some of her best ideas came during these morning pages. And I'm even noticing that myself, actually, even the other day I was doing it 
And then all of a sudden I was just getting creative ideas in the middle of writing it on like the side note I had to get down on a separate document because mm-hmm. I wanted to publish it. So like, don't underestimate this, but you have to get into the practice of doing it. So it's called Morning Pages. You can either get her book or you can just listen to what I'm telling you. It's three pages, stream of consciousness every morning and see what comes out, especially if you feel the call to really add something of value to this world. Like we're not going to get out of this unless we think of a new option and we actually pre- present ourselves as a solution to what's going on in the world exactly well said and then concludes the first hour so just recap a little bit i hope you guys see now really the import how important it is to activate our creative potential and why it is needed now more than ever to counteract the hostile evil agenda who are only imitating they cannot create they use our creativity in their favor so if we go along with them we're just submissive we just consume and stay unconscious, we just play along with them, we create their desired reality through us. So we need to contact and activate our creativity. It takes effort, takes work, inner work. It's directly linked to shadow work, right? To dive deep, it includes risks, being courageous, you know, embracing failure sometimes, trying things out, stepping out of our comfort zone and all of that, very, very important. Um, in the second hour, like to dive uh, we're going to dive deeper as well into the interrelationship between sexual energy and creative energy that's this whole topic in itself and also the uh, interrelationship between creativity and abundance and opulence and how this works uh, together and the whole misconceptions about spirituality and abundance and all that and nature um, so again, we want to dive deeper into thing, all of that. What else? Yes. So another thing I'm going to cover too, I'm going to talk about this concept as a Damien, not to be confused with demon, <laughs> which is a huge aspect of your creative spark. And then yes. another thing as well, I do actually have a quote from Osho regarding a, basically about how, um, you know, conforming uh, the mob psychology makes you uncreative. So I have a really good okay. quote about that Perfect. because that's kind of what's going on right now is like, as long as the mob psychology is ruling your psyche, especially this woke stuff, you know, where it's like, you can't say this, you have to say it in this way, that will be the thief of your yeah. creativity. So we're going to talk about yeah, what you said about that. Exactly. From a bigger picture perspective, it's evil forces where Tico that has, is, is trying to enslave humanity, is, is trying to kill the spirit, is trying to kill our creative spirit really you know to numb it down also ties into the vax and all of that i've written a whole article about that the metaphysical effects on the vax or even pharmaceutical uh, uh, drugs and all of that they kill our creative spirit so and also when you if you want to dive deeper into this work to really unlock your creative potential uh, and go on a journey with laura and myself for 12 weeks um we have still spots left uh, our 12-week in-depth coaching program starts july 25th until October 15th, and you can learn more about it and apply at thattimeoftransition.com. And again, if you want access to the second hour of the podcast and you're not a member yet, you can sign up to the membership at my website, veilofreality.com. And with that being said, see you all in the second hour. <laughs>